Hey everyone, welcome back to VoIP Tech. In this video, I will talk about uh, the special tools that I use for voice over IP phone installations or um, rollouts or conversions, however you want to call it, where basically I'm setting a bunch of these phones uh, for a customer. So I use my standard networking toolkit. Um, I've done some reviews on those on some other channels. I'll leave you some links in the descriptions if you want to see those. But this is particularly covering the tools that are specific to voice over IP jobs. So this is a VoIP phone right here, just kind of, you know, just to kind of level set before we get started. Uh, these are different than traditional analog or digital phones because they run over the Ethernet network as opposed to like a proprietary digital or uh, analog voice network. All right, so my toolkit um, needs to have some special things when I do that. Chief among them is my laptop. Okay, now it probably goes without saying that most of us go to jobs with laptops anyway. This laptop is actually kind of an older laptop. It's not terribly powerful, but what it does have that I like, it's got a built-in network adapter. A lot of laptops you get today don't have that anymore. You end up with those little USB dongle style um, network adapters, which are okay, but I don't trust them as much. Anyway, I have um, uh, Wireshark on here, and you can get Wireshark uh, for free. Just just uh, internet search it, Wireshark. It's a free download, and it's a packet capture software. Now, in order to use that, though, you also need some kind of device to do the packet capture. So you'll need something like this little doodad here. So this little guy right here is specific just for doing packet captures. Uh, what is this? This is a Dualcom um, uh, 1005PT, so DCSW1005PT. I guess I should put a list of all these tools in the description there so you guys can reference that after we're done. But the way that works is you have your laptop, right? And suppose you've also got the phone. Now what a packet capture is going to do is capture the traffic that the phone is making as it communicates with the network. And the way you do that is you need a three-way connection. You need a connection from your laptop going to this little switch here. So I'll go like, uh, I'll use port 5 because that's the mirrored port. All right, And then that's going to go to the laptop. And then there's going to be a connection that goes from the phone, so the, the physical Ethernet connector on the phone, there's going to be a connector from there going into this switch, either uh, port 1, 2, or 3. And then there's also finally going to be the network connection that goes to the wall outlet which ultimately leads to the network switch. Not this switch, but the, the, the real you know, company switch that provides the network services to the phone. All right, so here's what's happening. So that the other end of this goes to the, to the wall. So what's happening is, as the phone communicates to the wall outlet via passing through here, all the communication, all the discussion that takes place, the, the invites, the, the data, the, the stream of the voice, that's all being mirrored onto port 5. That information is all being relayed into the laptop, and the Wireshark is capturing those packets. Once that capture is done, you can save that and email it to a technician who can analyze that for the troubleshooting. So I don't actually do the troubleshooting with a Wireshark. I know enough to be dangerous, but generally I'm just capturing those for somebody if we're having problems and I send them to the tier two or tier three people who ultimately decipher what could be the issue. All right, now this Dualcom I think is about $100, $100 or something like that. There is a cheaper way to do that. You could instead choose to just get a hub. You can find hubs. So this is a hub. I know it looks like a switch, but it's actually a hub. And it says hub right on there. You can still find old hubs um, on eBay. And the reason you can use a hub for this and, and not a dumb switch 
is that a hub, whatever information goes into one port on a hub is repeated on all the other ports. So it essentially is capturing almost the same thing. And, and you could accomplish the same thing with a hub so long as you were just using it for one phone. Um, but uh, if you can afford to get like a real packet capture device, that's ideal. All right. So again, make sure if you're going to go the hub route that it says hub and not switch because the switch won't work. Switch will not work. Now you could get a really smart switch, which would probably cost you about the same amount of money as that as that little dual com device. But um, you'll have to program it. You have to program the, the packet capture and the port mirroring. Okay, so that's enough of laptops and port, uh, port mirroring capture and all that stuff. Let's talk about some other things that I bring. Um, I always bring with me an injector. So an injector is a device that sits in line between the wall outlet and the phone to supply power. So the reason that this is important is because usually what happens is the phone gets power over ethernet from the wall outlet. So imagine here's my phone and the wall cord, the cord, you know, the ethernet cord that's coming from the wall has already got the 48 volts on it that's supplying power to the phone. But when I decide I want to do a packet capture and then I get in the middle, then the problem happens is that I don't have power anymore. Now, especially if I use the hub. Now, fortunately, this device actually has what's known as a, as a PoE pass-through. So there's actually like a little way that you can put the wall outlet on one and you put the phone on two and it'll let the power pass through. But if I didn't have that luxury, I would need to bring a separate power supply so that it can inject power into the line. I actually did a separate video about power injectors and. Um, it's on, I think it's on this channel, but I could, uh, I could just uh, put a link to it in the description for you. All right, so always bring a 48 volt injector. You might be wondering why not just bring the outlet adapters, the wall plugs for these phones. The problem is they're all different. So, cause some of them are five volts and some of them are, I don't know, 48 volts. And so, and some of them are different sizes. So I finally, after a while said, you know what? If I just bring an injector, I won't have to worry about it. Another thing I always bring with me is my PoE checkers. So most of the installations I do usually involve PoE, power over ethernet. That means that the power to the, in, the, the phones are supplied through the wall outlet from the switch. Sometimes though, it doesn't work right or there's something wrong and so I need a device like this or been using this little guy lately, he's been a little bit more handy, just to check to make sure that there is in fact PoE coming out of the wall outlet, all right? So this is my um, Byte Brothers um, power panel. This is kind of old, I'm not, there's, probably, there's probably more recent, more recent versions of these now, um, but this is, a, this is a Byte Brothers PoE 1000 IL is the model number on that. And, uh, but then this little guy here, which was a fraction of the cost, um, does almost the same thing. All right, so something to check for PoE is important to bring with you. Another thing I like to bring with me is a banjo. Now, before I go into too much about what a banjo does, let me show you why I need a banjo. Oftentimes, I get in situations where I have to replace a fax line or a postal meter line, or sometimes an alarm line, although I try not to try to discourage the use of um, voice over IP analog for alarm lines. Um, and in order to identify the line, a lot of times I have to use the toner. And sometimes with a toner, it's easy to tone out, or easier to tone out the orange pair or the, the, the tip two R2. So the banjo, what the banjo does, if you're not familiar with it, is it's RJ11 on one side, okay? Then what it does is it breaks out the four different pins here, these little brass connectors. So you've got uh, your tip and ring for pair one and tip and ring for pair two. Well, because pair one is being used by the dial tone already, and you can certainly tone through dial tone, but when it's a really busy place and they got faxes coming and going, sometimes you just wanna get on the orange pair so if I tone out on the orange pair, I don't interfere with what they're doing. Now, 
it's true. When you put tone on the line, there's a good chance it's probably going to interrupt whatever fax is in progress. But but by, by toning on the orange pair allows me to identify the line without having to uh, be clipped directly onto their tip one ring one, which is the which is the you know the active active dial tone in, in use. All right, so I always bring a banjo handy for for toning out lines. And then while we're on that topic, yes, I always bring my toner and I always bring my tone probe. Now these this came as a kit. This is a fluke kit. Um, this is the Pro 3000 probe, and this is the What's the model number? The Pro 3000 toner. They work together. Whereas one makes noise and the other one picks up the noise. So like you turn on the toner, you know, and then it makes noise. Then you take this little guy and you you push the little button to hear what's going on. That's how you. That's it's like a it's like just a way of like hunting down lines. So you can make different tones. Anyway, so always bring a toner and a tone probe. That's very important. And also back to the laptop thing again, I always bring a USB to serial adapter and then a Cisco style console cable. Not because I'm always working on Cisco's, but because this type of cable, this, this nine pin uh, serial to RJ45 style uh, console cable tends to be pretty common on a lot of other pieces of equipment. So in the event that I'm asked by support to get connected to some equipment for some for some remote troubleshooting, having these two things allows me to connect my laptop to their uh, switching or routing equipment. All right. Also, I think I forgot to mention that I usually will bring um, some couplers. That kind of keep that with my toners. So the reason why you want to bring some couplers is this. Imagine you've got, you got uh, you're troubleshooting a phone here sitting on a desk. You've got an Ethernet cable that's plugged into the back of the phone. Okay, that's fine. Get that plugged in. And then the other end of the Ethernet cable goes down behind a cubicle and into a wall. And it's been like that for years. And the only way you would be able to get to this end of the cable on the wall is by either taking the cubicle furniture apart or moving it, which could be darn near impossible. So by having either an RJ45 or an RJ11 style coupler allows you to not have to get all the way back behind the wall where the wall outlet is and just simply unplug the phone and put your coupler on there like that. Now you've got a port that you could stick a toner in um, or anything else you need to put in there. All right, so, so that's the importance of having couplers is it saves you in the situation where you can't get to the other end of the uh, ethernet cable. Okay. Now, there are some and there are some traditional tools that I still need on voice over IP jobs. I need my lineman snips. I need some jumper wire. I need my uh, 110 and 66 punch down tool. And I need my lineman test set. Now you might be thinking, well, why do I need these things if I'm doing voice over IP? Because that stuff is not based in copper, right? Okay, well, the reason that is important is because oftentimes voice over IP installations usually involve some type of, um, usually involve some type of analog. So like an ATA. An ATA, in case you're not familiar, an ATA is just a little box that converts from the ethernet to analog. So the phones don't need that. Whereas the phone, the, 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 ether, the, the voice over IP phone doesn't need you to convert anything. The ethernet cord goes directly in the bottom and then you know the whole transformation of the ethernet into audio and microphone for your audio all takes place in the phone. But for devices like postal meters, fax machines, things that require an analog uh, adapter, um, sometimes paging equipment, this is an ATA it makes that conversion, but what comes out of here is traditional, you know, copper dial tone, and that's where you still need these tools because oftentimes the ATA will not live out next to the machine; it will live back in the PBX room, and you'll be making copper connections, you know, by you know, using jumper wire and 
snips and punch downs and you know checking for dial tone with your lineman set. Um, and so that's that's the reason I still need to bring those. Now I do sometimes get in situations where something doesn't work right and you get in kind of a finger pointing match with the local network people about the condition of the network. So one of the things I do to help with that, so what I'll do is I'll bring my cradle point and I'll take my smartphone and I'll, I'll set my smartphone up as a hotspot to the cradle point. The cradle point has an ethernet connector on it. Then I can go from here into an ejector and into the phone. If the phone registers on my network, but not on the customer's network, that at least gives me a point of reference to say, hey, I know the phone is okay. I know it can register when it's on an unfettered network. Can we please take a little bit more look at the topology of your network to see if that maybe there's, there's something still not set right? All right. So that is the conclusion of my special tools as it relates to doing voice over IP rollouts. Um, it's important to definitely bring the laptop and have the Wireshark and either a hub or some kind of special uh, PCAP device. Okay, well I hope you found that informative and if you are going to become a voice over IP field tech, then definitely consider the items that I've mentioned here and I'll try to leave a bunch of notes in the description and links and so forth like that. Okay, thanks for watching.